Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. The history of stealth fighters in the United States began during the Cold War, as the U.S. sought to evade increasingly advanced enemy radar systems. The first breakthrough came with the F-117 Nighthawk, developed in secret and unveiled in the 1980s. It became the world's first operational stealth aircraft, playing a key role in the Gulf War. Building on that success, the U.S. introduced the F-22 Raptor in 2005, the first fifth-generation stealth fighter with super cruise and unmatched agility. The F-22 Raptor was developed by Lockheed Martin as the world's first fifth-generation fighter, designed to dominate in air superiority missions. Introduced in 2005, it combines stealth, super cruise, agility, and advanced avionics into a single platform. Born from the U.S. Air Force's Advanced Tactical Fighter Program of the 1980s, the Raptor was intended to counter emerging threats from advanced Soviet aircraft. Tyndall Air Force Base is home to a significant portion of the U.S. Air Force's F-22 Raptor fleet, an advanced and costly air superiority fighter valued at over $150 million per aircraft. When hurricanes threaten the Gulf Coast, base personnel must act quickly to safeguard these critical assets. So, cool. Want me to shut down? Yeah, I'm going to shut down. All right, coming down. As Hurricane Hermine approached in 2016, Tyndall activated its storm response protocols. When time permits, the preferred option is to fly the jets to safer locations inland. For Herman, several Raptors were temporarily relocated to other bases out of the storm's path. However, not all aircraft can be moved. Some may be undergoing maintenance or be otherwise non-mission capable. For those Raptors that remained at Tyndall, special hangars and reinforced shelters were used. These hardened facilities are designed to withstand high winds and flying debris, offering maximum protection for both the aircraft and support equipment. While the fighter is packed with a plethora of impressive features, several key elements make the Raptor the epitome of all fighters. Two Pratt and Whitney F-119PW100 turbofan engines deliver a combined thrust of 70,000 pounds. The two-dimensional thrust vectoring nozzles can vector thrust 20 degrees either up or down. Thanks to the advanced engines, the Raptor is capable of supercruising, which enhances its operating envelope. The fighter inherits an impressive ferry range exceeding 1,850 miles when carrying two external wing tanks. Low observability 
made possible by the stealth design and radar absorbent coating, inherits the ability to penetrate through enemy airspace and launch surprise attacks. The Raptor's higher operating ceiling of 50,000 feet enables it to soar above typical air traffic while evading threats from ground-based air defense systems. The convergent-divergent thrust vectoring nozzles make the fighter super agile. Thrust vectoring is integrated with flight controls and controlled by the Full Authority Digital Electronic Control, or FADEC, without a single pilot intervention. Thus, they come in handy whenever flight controls become ineffective during high angle of attack operations to preserve maneuverability. With all these advanced systems, the fighter should be thoroughly inspected prior to each flight to ensure its airworthiness and mission capability. Usually, the crew chiefs are responsible for conducting both pre-flight and post-flight inspections to identify any mishaps on the fighter. Pre-flight inspection primarily consists of inspections and functional tests to verify that all systems are operating correctly. During the pre-flight inspections, the engines and related systems are considered imperative. The air intakes and exhausts of the engines are checked for FOD ingression and other anomalies. These engines are the cornerstone of the Raptor's performance. The higher thrust to weight ratio allows the fighter to perform vertical climbs while accelerating. This makes the fighter super maneuverable. In addition, with the higher thrust to weight ratio, the Raptor's wings experience a lower wing loading allowing the fighter to perform tight turns that could be advantageous in close-quarter dogfights. Furthermore, the fighter has the capability to perform some advanced maneuvers such as Super Cobra, Offensive Spiral, and Herbst or J-Turn. In some maneuvers, the airspeed drops below 100 knots, and yet the jet remains fully controllable thanks to advanced flight controls and thrust vectoring. When pushing further, the Raptor can maintain its controllability even during a stall with the implemented post-stall technologies. Raptor pilots are subjected to higher G-loads during operations, which could be as high as 9 Gs. Higher G-forces can cause G-induced loss of consciousness, which may result in fatal consequences. Thus, pilots wear G-suits to help them tackle G-lock by eliminating blood pooling on the legs during positive G-maneuvers. Furthermore, pilots also execute anti-G straining maneuvers and practice rapid breathing techniques to prevent G-lock. We like to go doomsday scenarios. So if, uh, let's say for example, I fit a guy wrong to his G-suit, he loses pressure on his leg, he blacks out, that's a bad day for a 22 pilot. Uh, so every single piece of gear from the helmets, if they don't have a right fit on their mask, they can 
pretty much hypoxate. So everything from their masks to their vests to their, their G suits, their harness even, all that gear literally keeps them alive, keeps them in the fight. So that's why it's important for us to get that, that right the first time, every time. When it comes to the armaments of the F-22, it could carry a diverse range of missiles and bombs depending on the mission. Unlike the F-15 and F-16 fighters, the weapons are not carried in external pods, as these would severely compromise the stealth of the aircraft. The Raptor can hold two AIM-9 Sidewinder missiles in its internal side weapon bays. Loading the missile is a three-man job, as it weighs 190 pounds and is just under 10 feet in length. Depending on the nature of the mission, the main internal weapon bay can accommodate weapons in two settings. One setting carries six AIM-120 Advanced Medium Range Air-to-Air, -air, or AMRAAM missiles. This missile is radar guided and is used for targets beyond visual range. When loaded for air to ground strike missions, the main internal weapon bay is loaded with two 1,000 pound GBU 32 jam bombs and two AIM 120 missiles with an air to ground loadout. Both AIM-120 and GBU-32 jam bombs are loaded with the help of a bomb loader due to their larger size. Besides the missiles and bombs, the Raptor has a six-barrel M61A2 20mm Gatling gun hidden inside the root of the right wing. The gun has an ammunition capacity of 480 rounds and a linkless feed system. These advanced missiles offer exceptional precision thanks to their state-of-the-art targeting systems. Missiles like the AIM-9 Sidewinder incorporate a much less expensive infrared guidance system. While the AIM-120 is equipped with an active radar along with an inertial navigation system, the pilot can fire and execute an evasive maneuver as these missiles are less dependent on the fighter's fire control system. While the F-22 has a decent fuel capacity of 18,000 pounds, there may be instances where the fighter has to be refueled in mid-air to keep the fighter engaged in a mission. Thus, air-to-air -air refueling plays a crucial role. The flying boom from the tanker connects with the fuel receptor during the fuel transfer. The F-22 pilot should maintain the required clearance from the tanker till the transfer is complete. The boom can transfer fuel at a whopping rate of up to 6,000 pounds per minute. Widely regarded as the most celebrated fighter aircraft ever built, the F-22 Raptor has earned its reputation through unmatched performance, cutting-edge stealth, and exceptional agility. Yet despite its remarkable capabilities, the U.S. Department of Defense made the strategic decision to end production.
with the final Raptor delivered to Joint Base Elmendorf-Richardson on May 5, 2012. This marked the conclusion of a groundbreaking $74 billion program that redefined the very concept of air superiority. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.